everyone. Welcome back to the Triforce Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Oh, it's no, so thank you. Wonderful. No, it's wonderful to be here. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, no thank you. Okay, fine. Thank me. <laughs> Thanks to me. <laughs> you gave in real quick. Yeah. How are you guys doing? PFAX has rushed in uh, late today, stuck in traffic. Oh. Uh, I was late as well because there was something going on in the town centre and the police had all like sealed it all off with that police tape. I was very excited. I was rubbernecking to see if I could see what was... There's someone dead or something. Oh, I think man, it's just... maybe it's gonna, maybe Bristol's gonna have its own convoy, like Ottawa style. So what there was a, a police mess over car there. that had a had a tire missing. It was like just had its like I don't know. It was very windy yesterday. Right, it's gonna be worse um, tomorrow. Yeah, it was as, as we record this. There's a it was, there, windy. It was Storm Dudley, and now yeah. we've got Storm Eustace descending oh on gosh. us. And I heard uh, on the news just now that it was like some kind of, it's called like a weather pit or something like that. Someone out there will know. And it's basically, you've got a weather <laughs> and then another bad weather and they get together and you get a, a pit of bad weather. And uh, they said, I don't yeah. know if that's the right, so, I mean, a pit is normally... Details, shmeetails. Yeah, no, no, no. The weather shmeetails. gets right in the pit. Details, shmeetails, all right? Listen. The, the wind is going to get up to 90 miles an hour in London. That doesn't happen in London. It's going to yeah, blow but there's lots things of over. Nat- yeah, but there's lots of buildings and stuff, right? So, like, it might cut it down a little bit. I, I think that makes it worse. It funnels it. Oh, maybe, yeah. I would have thought that, like, if you lived on an open plain and it was really windy, that would be the worst, right? Like, you oh, just, yeah, I'm you sure just it would. batter everything. You'd have That's no when you get, want to get in the old weather pit. You shelter, get down your hair blows off, you're, like, windswept to hell. S- Storm Dudley doesn't sound like he could blow much over. Neither does Eustace. I mean, if, no. if two threatening lads came around and said, we're Dudley and Eustace, you're in a world of trouble now. I tell you what, my good fellow. <laughs> you bat, bat their heads yeah, together. I, you need, like, you, they need to have more sinister names for storms, right? To make people more scared, like Storm Agamemnon or something like, you know, like... Storm <laughs> Kremna, the Evolution. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be, like, uh, yeah. yeah, names like that. Like no, a baddie. Not like, they're yeah. alphabetical, aren't they? And they retire the names when they're particularly bad. I guess that's because certain people have that name. You know, yeah. I don't know why they give it a human name. Yeah, give them and like dog and they're, names. They're just like shit. really basic names that aren't really used anymore, like Storm Colin. Okay. Oh. Like nobody's scared of Storm Colin, are yeah, they? Yeah, but then when, when Colin goes crazy any, any Colin's and kills like loads of people, Colin's not going to feel good about that. <laughs> Any Eustaces <laughs> listening to the podcast? Eustace. Oh my god. There are people called that out there. I'm That's sure. True. He's and, right. And they get stressed out. Yeah. We should just call it like Storm 378 A B. That would catch on, wouldn't it? No, you give him a name. You give him a name. Well, it's the same thing with fucking the COVID though. I mean, people it, it's all right. All, all of these viruses obviously have actual data names. Like yeah. but if it, and we're sort of here complaining, oh, for fuck's sake, we have to call it, you know, whatever the new one is. God, some Greek word. Mm. It's, it's just give it, a, just it doesn't matter. Sure. Man, a, a COVID update for you guys. My whole family has pretty much had it. You know? Oh my God. Um, just, Congrats. yeah, my son, I think, Push brought it back from school. My wife got it. My daughter now has it. Uh, my older daughter has it, sorry. The baby, we think, might have it, but, I mean, you, there's there's not really any way to, to check on a seven-month-old baby. I mean, I'm not going to be putting swabs in her nose or anything like that. So, we've, we're assuming that she's had it. I, I mean, she might not have. But um, throughout all this, yours truly, negative. All the Congrats. time. Are you a bubble Congrats. boy? Every goddamn day. I must well, be a bubble boy. Because yeah. you live in a garage a, away a, from everybody. I had a PCR test, negative. I've had Have lateral flows every day. Have you got one of those decontamination day? showers that goes through the door to Man, your I, house? <laughs> well, it's either that. I, either like I, I seem to be resistant to it somehow, or I've had it already and didn't realize. Like Maybe I was like asymptomatic or something. I don't know. But Maybe you were patient zero. Maybe I was. Yeah. Maybe I was, yeah. Like, what's it called? Typhoid Mary. Yeah. yeah. So I guess it's this the new variant, which seems not not as bad somehow. I don't know. Like my 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 kids have had it and they've they've sort of fared fairly well with it. Like they haven't been too oh, too it's sick. Amazing. And my wife was like a bit rough with it with, for like a day or two, but not nothing like dramatic. You know what I mean? Like just kind of generally feeling ill. You know what I mean? Like yeah. not not debilitated or anything by it. So. I don't Is know. that contain? I just find it amazing how these things just make their way around the world. Like, on, I always imagine it's one sick person on a plane, you know, sniffing yeah. away, and you see them like the people, like other people, like shine away from them, yeah, and they're like bleeding out of their their eyes a little bit, you know, and you're like, oh no. This I always is think of this scene from Alien. It now. And the guy's at the yeah. diner and he's all sweaty and uh, 
or no, he's not. A, he's not. In the, he's in the ship, right? The diner is from Spaceballs, isn't it? The guy at the diner. And, yeah, and it's like the spoof on Alien. That's right. But he's all sweaty and uh, mum spaghetti and all that kind of stuff, and then you know the alien bursts out. That's what it's like. Isn't I think. that Outbreak? The movie Outbreak. Outbreak. <clears throat> yeah, uh, maybe. D- Dustin Hoffman and anyway. Uh, so back to storm names. It's Eunice, not Eustace. Apologies. Oh right. And from the looks of it, the names go Enid. male, female, male, male, female, male, female. So the next one will be Franklin, then Gladys, right. Herman, Imani, Jack, Kim, Logan. Apologies. Jack is like a very common name. Yeah. And then this storm, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's M E with a little inflection over it. A B H. So that looks like an Irish name. It's probably not pronounced Meeb. It's probably Mave or something like that. So apologies yeah, yeah. Yeah. to anyone Apparently, if I've mispronounced that. Uh, we were looking at this thing, uh, like the most popular names for babies in Jersey for this year. And apparently ranking up there for um, for boy names is Logan. Logan, Logan is a is is a big one, yeah. After Logan Paul, I don't know. Yeah. I just for yeah. some reason, uh, Logan Fuck. just seems to be a very popular. Can you imagine name. being named after that? Well, it's better than KSI, I guess. That'd be weird. Or weird, uh, Wolverine. To be named. He's called Logan. Yeah, so. true. Wolverine. So, do you know why they named Storms? Um, for fun. It, it aids the communication <laughs> oh. of approaching severe me- weather. If they just say there's a storm coming, I think that people lose interest. If you say Storm Jack is coming, I think if you put a personality on it, people are more afeard. I still don't right. think it's a good idea. Whoever came up with this idea, do you know what? It was probably like one fucking guy and it caught on and now they do it and they haven't really questioned why. I don't think it's no, a good idea. No, I just idea. said why. Uh, I just said I, why. I know, but obviously... And, and you're, you're disagreering with it. You would no, remember but the names unnamed and the classifications storm. don't seem to be very international, though, right? Like, a lot of these names are well, very English. Well, you say that. You're not going to phone up France and be like... Careful, Hurricane, um, you know, Harold is is coming. They're going to be like, uh, you know, we called it something else. We called it Hurricane Pierre. So, well, they do name so storms. You. They do name storms. Let's call them foreign names. And yeah. that way we can be angry and our, we can stoke the fires <laughs> of our innate racism towards foreign cultures. We yeah. Let's call it, let's call them all French names. Well, yeah. they ask people to send in their suggestions for future names. And what are some very they, typical they, French they, names that you can think of off the top of your head? Well, Pierre. Besides Pierre. Uh, Besides Pierre. Because that's the obvious one. Jacques is a good one, yeah. Uh, Michel. Michel, yeah. For a, for, a, for a man, Michel. Yeah. Mathieu. 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 Jean. <laughs> I mean, <these> are... <laughs> Jean. <laughs> yeah. Jean. Yeah. Um, Gerard. Wait, we, have, we have run out. Eric. Very quick. Guy. Guy. Yeah. Guy. Jean Guy. <laughs> Yves. Jean Guy Tupperware. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Guy Pierre, Mathieu Pierre, yeah, yeah. they help. Yeah. That's a whole See, thing. See, there's a ton of them. There's tons, yeah. So, it, by the way, if we have, so we don't have uh, Q, U, X, Y, or Z. The, the storms never start with those letters. Why not? And what about Quentin? They just don't. Because otherwise, it would just be Quentin over and over again, and Quentins will get really pissed off. What about Qbert? The, it's not in there. Hurricane Pac Man. Not good. well, yeah. P is in there. You can have a, a yeah. Hurricane Pac Man. And this way, when it, if they name it Brian in America. Yeah. When it gets over here and we're on our B, we'll yeah. call it Brenda or whatever we're on. So it's, it maintains Barry. the B. Barreled. So we know it's Storm B of the season, Storm C, Storm D. It's only That's a matter of time before the brands are going to get on this and it'll be fucking Storm Doritos. Hurricane Pepsi, yeah. <laughs> Hurricane Pepsi yeah, but Max. would you want your brand associated with that? Well, exactly. That's why I'm saying, why would people? I don't want a Storm Lewis killing people. I'm sure there has no, been a Storm Lewis. I'm not cool about that. Well, tough you know I mean? shit. There's already enough. It's already enough problems with Lewis Hamilton. Tropical Storm Lewis. Le- Lennox Lewis. Other people with my name. Fuck. There you go. Right. It was a tropical Storm Lewis. Lewis. Theroux. <laughs> it's a French name. So as it well. happens. Yeah, Louis. Louis. There was a tropical storm, Lewis. There was. What about Ted? Was there a storm, Ted? I'm sure there was. <laughs> no, mate. Or I'm the storm. Ted. I'm storm, Ted. I'm just. I embody it. Uh, I guess it would be Edward. I suppose there's probably loads of them. Ed- Edward's fucking everything. Edward's buddy. You can't move for Edwards in Britain, can you? Like, really? Buddy did everything. Built the schools oh, as yeah, King we're, Edwards we're very... and potatoes and they're all over the place. It's a grand name. Your name slapped on it. It's like a, it's like a cheap bit of royal branding. What do want my name slapped on a potato? Where, where? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're not far away anyway. Look at your big round potato <laughs> head. Oh, jeez, that's not nice. <laughs> hey, tell us how you really feel. It's going to look even more like a potato because uh, I'm going to oh. get the eye surgery done so I don't have to wear glasses anymore. Oh, really? Yeah. So nice. M- my head. Man, will I, have, I feel like, like potato. you do you, but honestly, like, uh, I, th- I feel like. Um, You've worn glasses for so long, I think you look really good in them. Like I, I I'm used to you. I with appreciate them. that. 
Thank you, know? you, but they are a massive fucking pain in the ass. I mean, I know, because my wife wears them still, and um, she's always saying, like, oh, I hate wearing them. Yeah. I can't, like, lay down to watch TV. I can't. There's yeah. just, like, certain things you can't do with them that are annoying. Jake, she's hinting to you that she wants to get the lasers done. <laughs> no, I mean, we've talked about it a couple of times, and she just doesn't. Oh. She does not want to get it done. She's just, like, too squeamish to get it she's done. She's just happy to carry on complaining about it. So she's just going to carry on, yeah. She's, like, she's thought about it a couple of times, but... She just doesn't really want to go through with it. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll just complain about something every day and not do anything about it. I'm I. That's me in a nutshell. Oh, honestly. me too, man. I think it's a. I think it's one of uh, life's great um, joys and privileges joys. to just complain right. about stuff. I love complaining. It is. Well, I I hate it. They they fog up. They get wet. They get smudged. You have to constantly be aware of things banging into them. You've got to keep getting new ones. If you you worry about your glasses, if you're going to win holiday, I take like two spare pairs with me. Oh uh, yeah, I bet. because if I'm driving and one of my I lost a pair. I I got a brand new pair of glasses. Went in a pool. Someone splashed me. They sunk to the bottom of the pool. I had to dive down to get them, and they'd scratched on the bottom, the rough bottom of the pool. And I was like, oh. th these cost me a couple of hundred quid, and now they're done. And they were like. Perfect glasses. It's that Did kind of shit. Did you get the scratch-proof coating? It doesn't matter. No, nothing could have prevented extra. this. Nothing could prevent it. I know. I know. It's all a big scam. They have to. They thin your lenses. Oh, you don't want to have the thick lenses. You want to have them thin, ultra thin. So fuck off. Like it's like the upselling <laughs> that goes on in, in those arts. fucking glasses places. Yeah. And it's just Nuts. you know, it's like you just feel like everything. You're 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 constantly adjusting them. You're constantly cleaning them. It's a massive pain in the. They arts. always get you to buy two for one as well, and then like, and then you only really like the one set and the second yeah. set you didn't really think about, and so well, they're, they're just really there and they're right. shit. Yeah, and you hate them. Oh god. Anyway, glasses. To get the lasers, dude. It's worth it. But the thing is, my I got my lasers done like lasers done like it's like seven years ago now, probably. Damn, that's how long we've been doing this podcast. You have to you have to redo it every once in a while, right? Fifteen like, years. Yes, it lasts. every my fifteen eyes, years. Well, that's my what they eyes told me. are back to normal basically now. I, I I really need to wear glasses again, but I just like refusing. I don't have to drive, and I don't go outside. So, right. you know, if there's a sign I can't read, I just walk closer. <laughs> what about, what about um, like, I, I, I don't want you on my on my CSGO team, though, with eyesight like that. Hey, do, you, do you ever consider that? I want somebody that, who can actually see. But my, my close range vision is, is totally fine. It's just like right. when I'm at the cinema, things are a little bit blurry. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's oh. starting to get to, like, that long-range vision started to go again. Yeah, yeah. You can just get it redone. You can get it but redone. But the amount... Right? I know I could, but the thing is, like, it is, it is like... A little bit of hassle and it's not that bothering me at this point but when it does bother me I'll, i will do it um but no it's so freeing to not have to wear glasses god like one of the things that was worse was just i think you're just constantly aware of your movements when you've got glasses on right because you don't want to knock them off or yeah. bang them on something and you, you're also like you can't really lean over I just, like, you just feel automatically more stiff have, you, have either of you guys ever been punched in the face before like with yeah, glasses on not with glasses on no so do you think it's true what they say like you shouldn't pun punch a person with glasses you really shouldn't you could blind them like, I don't it, think you should punch well, anyone you could, but you could hurt your hand a lot more too right like if the but that, that's one of those sayings that allow that, that says there is a good time to punch someone they're really like if you've got to punch someone I mean you I'm know. a big fan of the runaway just oh, just, right. do, just, just run away just don't need to punch someone. What about running away, but then doing like a spin move in the air and a punch, like a re like a retaliation? I don't know. I'm more of a verbal kind of guy. I'll call someone an old bitch or a stinky cunt or something. Do you right, know like right to their face, really horrible. Like a, yeah, right to their face. In, the, in an aggressive away. way as well. Like you while they're get, wearing yeah, yeah, glasses, yeah, yeah. you can't insult someone if they're wearing glasses. That's I don't know if that. I've ever ever seriously called somebody like told somebody to fuck off or you know wow. like enraged oh, like i don't I've know I've, i don't know if i have, have I've ever done, it on done the street any... a few times really? yeah, yeah like yeah. you just told yeah. somebody to fuck off like fuck right off I'm yeah done. i called someone a miserable cunt the other day in the street really yeah i mean i i, I think it and like maybe mutter, mutter it under my breath like if i'm in the car what? or something it has but... to get to a point though there has to be a it step would, it would have to be happens. a very dramatic point for me to like they have outwardly to be, express they have to be doing something deliberately arsy or annoying to me i don't know yeah. like like beeping 
like you know, like like in a in a, in a at a traffic light, but beeping a pedestrian. Man, I must or be like, just really passive. I would just walk away. Like, I would never. You, the thing say is, Sips, you, you do need to leave the house to to. Get <laughs> That's the problem. Well, I mean, I've le- I left my house like once or twice in the past, and also like, the- people on Jersey are nice. I think <laughs> some of the people in Bristol City Centre are cunts, so you know, like, right. there's more opportunities I for mean, me I'm, to see them. You say that, I'm sure there's some cunts over here as well. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going around calling everyone a cunt. It, I'm just saying that sometimes <laughs> it comes a bit out. Like that. Yeah, it does sound. A bit I mean, like we know about your dark uh, passenger. The times with your personal trainer. And but I'm stuff. ready. I'm ready to like run away if they like posture aggressively towards me, or like you know, make maybe they're getting out of their car or off their scooter. But mostly they're trapped. Yeah, you know, it's like a guy on a motorbike. You know, or you're something. right. There's <laughs> no way he can catch you. Well, no, but often he'll have to drive onto like the the other bit. Do you know what I mean? I'm usually safe in my. So you hide behind a bollard. In a yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been so mouthy with somebody that they've like then turned aggressive and you've had to run away from them? Yeah. Yes. Really. I have a couple times. Yeah. Happened to us at university. Man, that has to feel pretty bad though, right? It was like, horrible. We were in our house, geez. and there was a guy on the other side of the road cycling, and just we were all leaning out the window because we. We were drunk and just having a laugh. We were on like the second story, and there was this guy going past, and we were saying bicycle, bicycle at him for no reason. And he was going down. This is in, in Plymouth on on uh, on the on North Hill there, and he did a big U turn, and he started coming up our steps. And because we were young idiots, we said, "Oh, he must know somebody here." But he went into our garden, and we said, "What's he doing in the garden?" And he found a massive log in the front garden and threw it at the window. No and way! Then, yeah, and he was shouting, "Fuck! Come down here! You can't so fucking bury it." We were like, "Jesus!" Oh, we were it. it was terrifying. Oh, it was terrifying. Man. But some people have. Of incredibly thin skin, it turns yeah. out. Like some kids say, bicycle, that's enough. That's like, the thing is, that's, you know what people, you know, in TV, yeah. bullying is this thing where, you know, people are like punched and like, 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 a, like, I don't know, the whole, the whole TV bullying is completely different to real bullying. Real bullying is someone going, bicycle and you think <laughs> and that bothers you to the point where you know you're thinking about it all the time and you hate the guy he'd had enough and you're like thinking about ways to just destroy him um but your ways to destroy him are you know maybe chucking his notebook in the river yeah I don't know. <laughs> where are you uh, going with this i never i, I never said anything in this situation <laughs> i'm about to describe but I, we, we had a very unsettling encounter one time not directly but it was when my my son was uh, was born. Maybe he must have been maybe like uh, one and a half, like two years old. He was really little. We were at the beach one day, and uh, it was like you know eleven o'clock in the morning or something. And uh, we were just at the beach. It was a it was a really nice day. So the beach was a little bit busier than usual. I mean, granted, it was like a weekday. Um, so, you know, people were still at work and stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't super busy, but we were just sitting there and he was, he was playing in the sand and stuff. He was having a good time. And, um, this, this guy was just like walking around and and singing really loud and like looked pretty drunk. Right. And he was, um, he was just like stopping. He would stop to like everybody along the way and be like, all right, uh, how's it going? Uh," Like singing and stuff like just didn't seem to have a care in the world sort of thing. But then, and and that was fine. We were just like, oh, whatever, you know, just like let our son play, like just ignore this guy. Um, but it was like a little bit sort of like, well, you know, what what if he like turns or whatever? And then sure enough, he said something to somebody and somebody sort of challenged him or, you know, told him to like go away or something. And he immediately turned, you know, like he was he seemed like this like sort of like, you know, carefree singing happy guy. And then instantly he was just like, it was it was, was a woman ready as to well flip. and he was like you fucking cunt you fucking bitch and everything like just going crazy like it was wow. really something and, some people uh, are just on a knife edge man. oh man it was it, it was it was really shocking and um it, it's one of those situations where like what do you do nobody did anything like there was there were plenty of people around nobody did a thing like everybody was just like oh my god like i am not getting involved with this guy because yeah. like you're just gonna get battered like you know if he if he can turn that quickly over something so stupid she was nice as well like she was like oh you know we're just trying to have like some quiet time here just leave us alone please or whatever because he was like pestering a bit right like 
He was uh, he was just being like a bit like uh, like a bit of a lout, you know, he's just like singing and just being just being like kind of an arsehole, but like uh, thinly disguised as like charming. I think some or something. people hang around a place and look for this, though. Right? Uh, yeah, like they, they, I guess. I mean, I guess like if most people where they're out, they're going somewhere or they're going to do something or they've got something to go back to do. Right. There's there's this bit. It's kind of the passerby attitude where it's like, nope, sorry, I'm doing this thing. Whereas some people are just looking, they go out there and they're like, they're in a bad mood and they're looking for someone, some provocation yeah, to just justify some... in their mind. I guess. Like they're yeah. just that little step and they're like, oh, okay, this guy did this to me and now I can fight him or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, I don't um, know, it's weird. It's really unsettling though, just to think how sort of fragile it all is. You know, like you go somewhere and you, you know, like you you take part in society or whatever. And you're you're under the impression that, you know, like day to day, nothing really happens, right? Like you can go somewhere, generally there's like law and order and stuff, and you're 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 you know, you could you could sit at the beach, for example, and and probably not be um accosted or whatever. But then something like this happens and you realize, holy crap, like if there were more people like this, it would just be anarchy, right? Like there would just be no way to control like all all of this but luckily they're few and far between i guess i don't know it's just yeah it's a weird one i think they must i think they are rare i think i i i I don't actually really shout very many people in the street (laughs) i love the turnaround now (laughs) after after the upsetting story and i'm not (laughs) that's not me by the way that's not really bad that's not me me. uh, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. Like, I guess I'm not that guy. I'm not hang. I'm not on a knife edge, ready to 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 pop. Um, <laughs> or maybe I am. God, who knows? Uh, shall I go through some news? Yeah, just, go you, on you then. just don't know me. Is all I'm saying. No. Um, yeah, you're a loose cannon. A couple of pieces of news. This is old. I've talked. Right. Did I talk to you about this last week? Maybe I forgot. Anyway, last week I noticed um, that Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Fucking Jeff. Jeff. That's a. That's right. That's a Jeff name. Yeah. That's a Uh, Jeff. He's building a 500 million uh, pound super yacht, right? Right. In Holland. Right. And Netherlands. Sure. Dutch country. Yes. Yes. Gosh. (laughs) Man. This is the worst newsreader ever. He's the the, the, the mast is so high that they're going to have to dismantle a bridge in order to get it out of Holland. (laughs) A historic bridge. So. People in, in the, why did he, the town. Why, why did he have it built there? Like knowing that this might happen. Like why didn't he build, well, build it like somewhere else? Because if else? a problem comes up, money can solve it. Yeah, exactly. Also, surely it's easier to take the fucking mast off and put it back on the other side rather than take a bridge down. That's moronic. Well, apparently it's one of these wireframe metal bridges, though, and apparently it can be taken down. And so it's going to be built up again and fixed and stuff. But apparently it's just cheaper, I guess, to do it that way round. And so the Dutch are obviously unhappy. But and have where's he going to park it? His yacht. What? Where's he going to park it? Yeah, because there's bridges all over the fucking place. What? Well, every Tell time he comes it. in anywhere, he's going to have to have a bridge dismantled. What a I don't flex. think that's how rich people think, though. I think Bezos is coming for your bridges. Out of my way! Him buying this, <laughs> him buying this thing is just like him buying a new Rolex. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. It's just a status symbol. You think he's gonna buy that and use it like once, and then just be like, "Ah, oh, I'm done Sink yachting. It. Like I don't want it." Yeah, he's just gonna fucking poke a hole in it and yeah. drop it into the briny deeps, and then go down and with his submarine that he's gonna commission and never. When we went it. to uh, when we went to Ibiza a few years ago for a summer holiday, um, we went down to the. There's a big sort of key area there and it's just teeming with yachts right uh, yeah i've definitely spoke about this before and there were just like dozens of these huge fucking yachts there was one that was like a four-story building as a yacht and it had the hot tub with the babes in it and like the table with the older dudes sitting and doing doing business yeah. while their b- sexual playthings bathed Yes, bathe in the bubbles, my <laughs> I shall return soon. I just have some business to attend to, and I'm sure Bezos yes, is the same. Yes, I've got an important Zoom meeting Must about zoom. the coffee machine. Yes, I, in the I office. have some business to attend to about repairing the bubble machine that you broke <laughs> with your frolicking in the bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> and I have to have a bridge taken down to fit my yacht through. Yeah. Take the bridge off, take it down. But, but, but sir, it's all the bridges. In London, take them down. Take them down. <laughs> London Bridge is falling down. That's what I'm going to sing when I ride through my fucking yacht. Automatic. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're right. 
right. You know? It is all the rich and famous who have their yachts in well, Ibiza. It's like a party place, right? Ibiza. Is it still? Is it still kind yeah, yeah, of like yeah, a party destination? Time, yeah. I know it was, it was like uh, majorly in the 90s, yeah. but I don't know well, if it still yeah, is now. It's like, it's like the, big, the big dance culture scene. But also, no, like it's one of these places that the super rich of like of New York and people like this go over to in their yachts or, or rent yeah. them. So, like Jay, can, I mean, like yeah. Jay-Z and Beyonce's yacht. Have you yeah, ever seen course. that bad boy? It's yeah, I think huge. so. Yeah. I think that's one of the places where certain like groups of rich people in, in the in the know go. So I mean, yeah, Ibiza is like a focal our, our point. flight there and, and back. The the flight out, it was all like there were a couple of other families like us, and then it was all young people. And they were all dressed up like they were going out already on the plane like this was a big week for them or a long weekend or whatever well like a normal family or rich family no no there was like it was like young young people oh, like right, uh, right. you know kids going out to, to the clubs and, and stuff like that and then there and, were other yeah. families like us just regular regular folk who were clearly not going to go clubbing but we're regular just because... potato faced folk yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly and then uh yeah. yeah see that's another thing i can't wear sunglasses i have to get fucking prescription sunglasses and because you know, get them updated as often as your regular glasses. All the glasses wearers out there are nodding and going, mm, "Yes, yes, Perry, and you're so right." And I know I'm right. You go to put a pair of something, you can't see shit, dudes. so you have to have prescription they, they sunglasses. They always look shit as well. And, and then you have to have a, put your other glasses in a case. You got to carry them. A fuck off! I'm getting my eyes zapped. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see. Through Plus, sunglasses space and time. are one of the most lost fucking items. Yeah. Of, like... But now imagine your sunglasses Man, I don't, don't I cost never a wear sunglasses from the petrol station. I never wear them either. But if you're in the sun, you kind of need them. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just squinting all the time i just don't go in the sun either i just kind of don't yeah, like it you the worst person to talk to about leaving yeah, uh, anything yeah. involving the outdoors is, 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 is <laughs> sunglasses put, what's the put point me in a, do that? put me in a dark air-conditioned room every day of the <laughs> week i'm good i to have a conversation it's, it's uh so another news um new zealand known as a bastion of fucking De- like, debauchery, um, villainy, and debauchery. No, of like orcs. Of, of like orcs. being being good. Right. They've got COVID protests going on. Oh right? yeah, that's right. They're they similar kind of um in the same following the same trend as the the stuff that's happening in Canada in uh, in Ottawa and uh, Toronto. Right. They were pl- they were playing various songs to try and annoy protesters. Now I don't know whether these songs would work the, right. on you guys. So imagine you're a COVID protester, okay? Yeah. You're mad about something for some reason. I'm not even really quite sure what they're angry about, but they're mad. And they're all out there with their, with their umbrellas. It's raining. And that hasn't, you know, they've already put up with that, right? Right. You know, that drives a lot of people off, yeah. the rain. But no, they're New Zealanders. They're hardy folk. Right. right. They can put up with a little bit of rain. They're stood outside the parliament building, and you're the police chief, uh-huh. and you, you've, you've got... You you you've got the CDs from your car. Oh I guess, man! It's, because I, you if, play... I, if I'm trying to disperse a crowd, uh, my go-to has got to be Last Ketchup. You know that one? I see. So in fact, you're very close. So they've been playing the Macarena, right? <laughs> right. But also Celine Dion's "My Heart Will Go On." Oh God! Yeah, anything by Celine Dion. If you touch me like this. <laughs> like uh, anything by her, I was saying. I was saying this the other day on stream. I, I probably said it before, but like, I feel like somebody was. There was some something. Uh, you know, Adele has won like some Gram. Uh, I don't know some Brits. some awards. She won the Brit- some Brits. Brits. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, you know, people were talking about like um, going to see her live and stuff. And I thought, I just thought to myself, um, and I've thought this before. Who the fuck is sitting through a live Adele show? Like, that's got to be so fucking boring. Like, no Why? offense to Adele, but, like, it's got to suck. It's like, uh, there's uh, there can't be, like, <laughs> what, you're just <laughs> sitting there just listening to her sing? Like, it's got to be what so fucking you? boring. And, what are and you talking about? It's like, it'd be like going to, to watch Celine Dion live. It's the I same agree, shit. I agree, I would hate it. So I actually would boring. hate it. It's just somebody standing <laughs> there so singing. Bad. Dude. Fuck me, man. There's what no way. What are you way. saying? It's just someone standing there saying, so all live music like what's the point essentially it's just uh, just some guy standing there playing no their i'm saying what's the point of adele being uh, doing live music That's... she's she's an incredible singer people love her music i'm a big fan i think she's fantastic you go see I don't her like live. celine dion i i would do and report i back. would absolutely go see her live oh my she, God, she's man. an incredible vocalist and then and i love and her music see... 
Who else do you reckon would see live Sips? Like, who would you see live? Well, I mean, we went to see Ghostface live. That was awesome. Well, that what was, did they do? Just say a load of words into a microphone. Was <laughs> yeah. No, but like, I mean, just because you don't like it, man. Come on. No, but it was it was a fun show. There was like lots of like audience participation and I stuff. I hate audience like, participation. I hate. Oh, right. That. I don't want. I don't want. <laughs> you just want to do... see. You just want to sit there. I want to watch it in a I bubble watch them, and yeah. watch Adele just belt you out. You want to be there with your little binoculars on a stick. See, think, oh, one loves visiting Adele at the Royal Albert Hall. <laughs> I think you guys are way, way, way off with this. I really oh, do. Man. I, 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 the I, wrongest I, opinion I've I heard in a she's while. She's probably technically really good, but man, she's so fucking boring, and her songs are fucking boring too. Like, I and mean, I would never go see her live. It's just like it would send me to f- into a fucking coma. Like, okay. what about Celine Dion? How would you feel about that? Same. No, I'm not, I'm not a fan. I'm not a, not a fan of her. Oh my right. god, Jesus Christ! I I would rather just fucking die than watch that live. Like it's oh god, that's got to be the worst. It's, it's like excruciatingly boring, right? Like oh my god. So they sprayed water on them. That work. <laughs> okay, and you'd then, have to do that to me at a Celine Dion concert as well, just to just to just to fucking bring me back to, to reality. Up. I'd be gone. I'd be I'd be fucking out of there. And then uh, they also played children's hits, Frozen, Let It Go, and Baby Shark. Um, but then a twist. Um, they were playing Banalo, Barry ba- Banalo, Barry Banalo's <laughs> greatest hits, right? When James Blunt yeah. tweeted, "Give me a shout if if you need some help." Oh Use yeah, this. this is James Blunt's thing now, right? Like he he goes, he's he's gone along with the with the ripping of himself. He's very sort of like self deprecating, but it's it's actually quite funny. Yeah, he was saying something about like. Um, well, I can't remember the context of it, but basically, I think it was to do with uh, Neil Young and all of the the Joe Rogan Spotify stuff. And he sort of, and then James Blunt sort of chimed in and said, like, he's going to release a greatest hits album or something like that on on Spotify, but making fun of himself because he knows that fucking everybody sort of makes fun of that "You're Beautiful" song, right? Or used oh, to. That's the one that got yeah. played. Yeah, that so song played about an hour later. That song sucks. Now, <laughs> that song sucks. would you go see that live? No, I'm not a no. fan. That's my point. It's just because you don't like it. You can't. You can't write it off as what's the point. Like that's it. Like I, I don't like Celine Dion, but I'm sure for some people it's a fantastic evening. It doesn't. And I'm not saying you can't criticize Adele. But to even question why on earth people would want to go and see a performer that they yeah, love I can, I, I makes can't no just sense. I, fathom it at all. The more you're I, defending Adele here, the more I'm getting on Sips' side. That, so, well, that's because you're an objectionable bastard at times. I know I am. Oh my Listen God. up. So I obviously don't agree with the COVID protests, okay? But, but. how do you feel about the psyop of like PSYOP. kind of playing music? Yeah. That's what it I is, love right? That term. It's playing like music kind what, of to 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 disperse the wear crowds, them down right? and disperse them. I mean, them. if they if they could really fuck up, if you played something by the the Venga Boys, people would be going nuts. It would be the best part. Yeah. Well, but that's the thing. Okay. You've got to think, what are you trying to do with this crowd? Are you trying to- Get them fucking hyped! Let's go! No! Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously the point is- Get some fucking Vindaloo going in there. (laughs) (laughs) Vindaloo! (laughs) (laughs) And then drop Vindaloo on them and see if they stay. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, But the point is that the thing about a crowd is it's like um, an animal, right? And it can be angry and bored. Mm. And if you keep them entertained under the guise of and trying to annoy them, right? You can change the mood of a crowd so it's less dangerous, right? Do you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. gotta, you gotta find something that would really put them off big time, right? Like I feel like at an all right yeah. protest, like you, you could just like, on a mega screen with the like, volume turned up really loud, just. Just loop like twenty four hours of gay porn, and they'd be out of there immediately. <laughs> oh my they god! They would just be like, "I am not suffering this. I'm not watching two men having sex or more. Have men having an orgy? No way. I'm out of here. I'm a Christian." <laughs> you know what I mean? That would get rid of them immediately. Yeah. Uh, maybe they should think about doing that. Guys, you know, really loud guys, as well. Uh, I- I'm I'm just standing here because I believe in our cause really strongly. Uh, this pains me. <laughs> this pains me to watch. I'm having an awful time. Oh, I hate it. God, what are those guys doing? You gotta find something, right? 
It's gonna find. <laughs> it's gonna find something that is just at odds with. Uh... All right, let me. You guys go, but let me stay here and take this burden for you. I'll watch all of this gay porn. Or some guy <laughs> says, "We. I've already seen this one. Play something else." <laughs> it's fucking so boring, man. I know how this one ends. <laughs> There's a good bit coming up. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh fuck's sake. Um. All right. Well, yeah. That was. I don't know how I feel about about any of that, but um. I guess it's something to be aware of if you've got a protest going. Don't yeah. let them. Don't let them trick you. Or let them get out of there. You know. Yeah. Just go home. It's time to go home. Just go back to whatever fucking cave you live in or whatever, and and, and fuck off already with all this. Let's <laughs> all right. let's do that instead. Good. <laughs> Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy oh. way to save when shopping on your phone or computer. I was uh, actually, I bought some board games the other day from a, a website. I didn't even notice I had Honey installed on Chrome wow. and it saved me £10. So, holy crap. crap. What are you going to do with all that money that you save? Buy some well, money. I could, I could buy some other stuff on another site and save more money and then just use that extra money in an infinite loop. Holy crap. <laughs> so yeah, imagine you're shopping on one of your favourite sites. When you check out, Honey just uh, automatically applies coupons to your order. If it finds one, the prices will drop. So yeah, I, I can recommend it. Now you don't need to carry what your pesky coupon book around with you anymore. That's yeah, right. Yeah, I, got my, I got my coupon book ready. Think of all the space you're going to save. Get five cents off this carrot. <laughs> and a, a nickel off that coupon book. Yeah, so you don't have to do that anymore. It's all digital. Oh my god, what a deal. What a steal. Just save myself 15 cents on a carrot and a cucumber thanks to money. Is there a URL for that young man? That's, that would be that would be wonderful, but a, digi a digital version of that. Digital uh, just version. Imagine. Of my goodness. Just imagine. A digital cucumber. Get honey for free at joinhoney.com slash triforce. That's joinhoney.com slash triforce. Or you could just look it up on, online. Thank you. I will. I will look it up. <laughs> This episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Using the internet without a VPN is like leaving your keys in the car while you just run into the petrol station for a quick snack. Most of the time, <laughs> oh probably fine. Who would but do what that? happens if someone comes along and drives off with your car? And worst, worst even, what if your coupon book is in the car? <laughs> You've lost and them it's both. gone. It's gone. Dude. Lost my coupon book was in the back seat of my car, which I had not protected with ExpressVPN. But luckily, Lewis Brindley has got ExpressVPN and Lewis Brindley. In motor vehicle. And indeed, it doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack someone. Just some cheap hardware is needed, and your kids are probably already doing it. Oh, don't tell them. Jesus. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling your personal info on the dark web. I'm in the wrong business. Uh, ExpressVPN will protect you. We're wasting our uh, time here. Jesus. It would take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. Oh. Uh, you can fire up the app with just one button and protect yourself. It works for phones, laptops, tablets, and more, so you can stay secure wherever you go. Oh, man. So, yes, thank you. Thank you everyone uh, that's expressvpn.com slash triforce expressvpn.com slash triforce three months free uh on with the show i got i got some news uh we got a cat at the weekend oh uh, nice. a, new, a new addition to the house she is... oh my god so you've already got a dog and a hamster no we don't have a hamster oh no we just have okay. the dog uh and obviously right. our, our our cat our, our cat of 17 years died last year, Aww. very sadly. Um, so we... Uh, That's a good age for a cat, though. She I had mean, a great life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Um, and, you know, I said to the kids, look, you know, she's getting on a bit, so be prepared and everything. And they were very upset. But, of course, of course yeah. within 24 hours, they were bugging me for a kitten. So I was like, well, let's, you know, let, let, let the ashes settle in the ground before we start replacing her. And, yeah. of course, we wanted the dog to get settled in and everything like that. <clears throat> so now we're going to get uh, we, we've got the cat um, and we got her at the weekend. She is she is lovely little ginger half Persian ginger uh, thing. She's very sweet. She's called Bonnie and the kids love her. They absolutely love her. However, 
Introducing it to the dog has been tricky. Right. And I've decided, right. I, I've done a lot of reading and listening to things and, and chatted to the vet and I chatted to our dog walker and a couple of other people about how to do it. Because obviously the, if she was a grown cat, she would have had experience with dogs before. But this kitten's gone from the house where she was uh, born and, and lived the first few couple of months was all cats. Like they were real cat people. Then she suddenly has a dog. So I thought, how am I going to do this? I have to do it very slowly. So one of the guidances said, Introduce them to each other through two rooms where they can see each other, but not interact. And right. I'm like, who lives in a house that has two rooms adjoining where there's no way to get between the two rooms, but you can still see? <laughs> so it's like, oh, that's for people who live like in a greenhouse with or a, a glass window. house. I've got something. a big window in my garage. Yeah. I, that's how I live that all the time. That would be perfect, right? That's why I don't so, have COVID. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I was <laughs> all right, I'll open the door a crack. And the dog can look through and the cat can see the dog. That's their first interaction. Gave it 24 hours before it did anything else. And then I kept the dog on her lead and held her outside the cat's room and opened the door and they sort of looked at each other. And then I let the dog off the lead and kept her with me, kept giving her treats. And she was very calm and very chill, trying to get them close to each other. And the cat and the dog are really, really close to actually interacting. Uh, and then the cat, smack the dog on the face, which I was like, great. That's what I want. I want the cat to show no fear and to dominance because the dog is 12 times her size, right? Like yeah. we, we have the, the cat weighs a kilogram. The dog weighs 12 kilograms. It's not a fair fight. So I want the cat to take the, uh, the, the lead. And they're getting there. And I think within a week, they'll be running about the house, no problemo. Be but like it's, it's, Milo it's, and Otis, like right. uh, for the for a modern time, you know? But it's really interesting to they see. They could go have adventures around the city together. They could. That would be hype. Um, yeah. Just let them out. But it's, it's interesting to see them re react to each other. Like you're really seeing them try to figure this out. And the dog is, she's been really good. Like she lies down and tries to look as sad and helpless as possible to show the cat. This is, I'm not a threat, you know what I mean? And the cat keeps hissing and then she'll come over and give her a sniff and then back up. And it's like this really interesting dynamic between the two of them. Where I, and I'm just kind of letting it play out in with, with a supervised way. If anyone yeah. out there knows of a much better way, let me know. But I, I thought the very delicately was well, the I'm way sure to do it. Well, I'm sure everyone will, will, will give you, I think just be careful. I think that's what most people oh, absolutely. will give you advice. Absolutely. Like, and, and follow as much advice as you can and keep keep an eye. I would it, consider you, yeah. buying them matching sweaters. Like, um, <laughs> you know, get get your dog a sweater that has right. like a hand pointed that says, I'm with I'm stupid. I'm with stupid, yeah. yeah get and then get there. the cat one as well. So, you know, like. That's such a good idea. Just like have that. them bond through, you know, like make them feel like they're Shared just. Shared bad fashion. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's a sweet idea. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, is... a, it's a it's a fun little ex science experiment to see them try to try to get along. And what I've been doing is petting one and then going over and petting the other, so they can see that I'm sort of involved with both of them. And when I'm petting the cat, the dog's watching me like I see, you know, and kind of looking horrified. Yeah. And then when I'm petting the dog, the cat is like, "Why are you petting that?" And she, but she's also watching. So it's interesting to see their their tiny little brains whirring and working overtime to figure out what the fuck is going on and how to how to resolve this. But to yeah. be fair, especially to with it, with big big boss there, just like lording right. over them. So you know, I'm watching them both sort of thing. Although cats don't really they don't respect you the way dogs do. I mean, you know, they just don't. They just sort of you know they they do less. they do their own thing. They're their yeah, own yeah they do masters. they go their own way. Yeah. But, um, but we're getting there. Anyway, I just thought it was interesting. Nice. No, that is a, that is interesting. Very interesting. I would also like to share that my um, my seven month old daughter is sitting in her high chair and eating mush um, hey. on a daily basis now. She's having porridge. Uh, she had some potatoes. She eats pasta, Lovely. like uh, just like little tiny amounts. But yeah. um, man, she's loving it. Like she's that's great. Yeah, like it's going it's going pretty good. Think like how my exciting other... it must be to be oh, to eat food. Yeah. I love food. And you get I love, to eat for the I first love time. babies have no filter either, right? Like you, right. you give them something for the first time and if it doesn't taste right or something, you know about it immediately. Yeah, like the facial back. expression, they cannot <laughs> yeah. hide it. Like, it's so funny. Oh man. But yeah, no, it's uh it's it's weird with the third baby. Like everything just happens so quickly, you know? You're just like you kind of um like you know baby's born and you just think all right time to hunker down and get through like the you know like the, the sort of tougher times sort of yeah. thing 
Yeah. But it's gone so quick, it's insane. It's but, like, I mean, you, the, the, you're so occupied already. Like, you're so occupied with the other two as well. This is true, yeah. It's like, true. when you've just got the first, everything everything is structured around that. Yeah. yeah One yeah. person. Whereas now you've got three, you've got so much else to occupy your, your parenting. The, oh, the, man, the, there's the always third something. Kind of, yeah. kind of slots in there. It's easy, always easy. something. Oh, my yeah. God. That yeah, sounds, it's crazy. That sounds great. Yeah, it's good. Uh, talking about making babies oh, and oh, yeah. rich people, oh. I saw a thing this is week. Is this about Prince Andrew? No. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> I'll see if you can guess where this is happening. Okay. Um, there is an airline charter company offering couples the thrill of joining the Mile High Club. Jesus. Oh. So they've pimped out this Cessna with like what? a like they Vegas. put like a heart shaped Double. bed on it and Las stuff. Las Vegas. It is Las Vegas. Yeah, it's gotta You're be right. Vegas. Ding 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 ding. Yeah. So yeah, they've got two. Um, they've got two Cessnas, four one fours. Which literally all they have in there is a twin mattress uh, on the floor, oh, several pillows covered in red satin, and a curtain that separates the passengers from the pilot a who's curtain? wearing noise cancelling headphones. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, he couldn't possibly take those off. Um, Come on. So, yeah. Also, that's not safe. What if they're trying to get through to him saying, you got to look out, there's, there's a mountain. <laughs> Your head towards a mountain. <laughs> and he's just listening, he's singing to himself. <laughs> He's just screaming, he can't hear you. Yeah. He's listening to Adele, thinking yeah. about the concert he's going to later. <laughs> oh, he's so excited. That would be so grim. Oh, man, yeah, going to an Adele concert would be, I know, I It'd agree. Be so good. I mean, all the other people that have done it on that fucking skeezy mattress. And there's just well, I mean, it's the same as a hotel. You just don't really think about it. Because the thing is with a hotel, it's like, uh, you know... Yeah, sure. Like you know, people go there to to have sex and stuff, but also people go there like yeah. on a business trip or a vacation or whatever. Right. But with this plane, you're only doing one thing. One thing. Like, it's not like ah oh, shit, I haven't I haven't been sleeping very well. I'm gonna book a ticket <laughs> on the love plane and just try to get it some kip. Like I'm just you know, you're just going yeah. up there to awkwardly have sex like on a plane. Like I don't know. Well, I think I think the the surely the appeal of the Mile High Club has to be like the forbidden fruit exactly. element right it's not like i feel like if you're doing that it's you're not really part of the mile high club i'm sorry I like agree. They, we, we have to have some standards here yeah, like I agree. uh you you got it you've got to be secretly doing it in one of those small ass bathrooms on a jumbo jet because um, there's skill in a mile that. high yeah. there's serious skill in and that. i don't even think of cessna can go a mile high can it? i don't know i'll have to refer to cessna maximum altitude Yes, oh, please do. I'll look it Thank up you. For you. Because I mean, if if not, that's another nail in the coffin for fourteen thousand um, feet. I, mean, I see what you're saying. Fourteen thousand feet is their maximum. Uh, I don't think right. they go that high. Feet to miles. Uh, fourteen thousand feet is two point six five miles. All so, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So it it can. It so can technically, go. To, to join the can Mile High Club, you'd have to be doing it during takeoff or landing. Otherwise, you're in the three or four mile high club. Yeah. I've been I lied to. It should I be the see. five mile high club because that's that would be thirty thousand feet would be um five point well, six eight miles dis- maybe they have to like when they're about to come they just bang on the thing and he descends down to, like... <laughs> oh, it's man. only uh, so, hold it hold what it. is it <laughs> five thousand feet take off now six thousand feet <laughs> you, you, you basically have to get it on takeoff or landing or get them to hover, uh, or, or right. you're not actually in the Mile High Club at all. Shocking. Well, yeah. it, I think it's multiple miles is fine. It's yeah. still look. I think it's it's more yeah. of a, yeah. a a Blue Peter badge kind of scenario, isn't it? You know, do they do they confirm? Their... I assume there's a certificate, so they uh, must confirm the well, pilot is watching. I'm telling a, you, a 60 minute flight is a thousand dollars. You can get a hell. 90 minute flight if you're you know if you think you're going to take that long. Fucking hell, very optimistic. What a boring flight pattern. Just going around and around while two people are boning in the back of your plane. Fuck off. Uh, You could also get a wedding in there for uh, <laughs> yeah, 1000 yeah. You could get married in there. Definitely. How get much does it cost? In there, a grand uh, what, for an hour. What, what a grand to get married in there. Man, I don't know. Like, uh, it's not for me. Fair enough if that's like your thing or whatever. But like. Oh man! I just you like can have that. a romantic three course meal before sex or after sex. Oh, after. do you have to stipulate when you would like it? Like it's <laughs> all there's so. an itinerary. Can I have a okay. during, please? Can you bring me my dinner during? This? Well, again, I think it's just the pilot and you two. So I think you're you're gonna have to figure that one out. Does he just yourself. throw a bag oh, of McDonald's back back at the <laughs> back of the plane? Although it says. Um, Although they've mostly booked couples, they have accommodated groups of three and four people. Wow. Exciting stuff. <laughs> 
God, on the my plane. God. So, um, and also, 300 bucks extra will get you a ride to the tarmac in a limo and a bottle of champagne to really, oh, you know... wow. Live really in the high spice life. It up. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. So, do you not think it counts? The luxury. Some people don't think it counts unless you're flying commercial as well. Like, you know, yeah, I think you gotta, uh, you, you gotta be in like, you gotta be in economy class on like a transatlantic flight, and then you gotta be doing it in one of those small bathrooms. And I is think. it is it illegal to do yeah. it as well? Yeah. Yeah. God, Jesus, that sure is it like is. very antisocial behavior. Like. It's you got kids and babies and everything on that plane. Like you know, what what if you what if you could hear it happening? Jesus, no thanks. Well, I, I, don't, I, I think having sex be... in a public place is generally considered illegal. It's kind of so... kind of gross as well. Like, please don't do that. I don't want okay. to happen upon you doing that, or you know, I certainly don't want my kids to happen upon you doing that either. Like, well, look, some people have a little this bit of responsibility list. for yourself. And you know, Jesus, I, am, I for one am all for finding Luke holes right. in the bucket list right you know there's a hole in the bucket put your dick in it go right. for it you know get in a safe way in you know it, yeah there's no there's no law breaking no no children are gonna be crying you know you're in vegas what happens in vegas or are you technically in vegas if you're two and a half miles yeah, above yeah, yeah if you're in the airspace like yeah, kind of technically you are yeah how high does the airspace go oh space. well it's, it, up to space and then and then it's okay. the final frontier up there like uh, it's anybody's game right no, now. i'm it's sure wild. there's a limit there's a there's like a hard limit and then you know Do you reckon you could set up like a pirate like radio station above in space La las vegas and you and could set sell, one up in space and sell love flights like advertise your love flights on there as well. I, I don't think anyone's ever had sex in space. I guess. So. Oh no, I think I think I oh, think come they have. On. I bet you they have. Yeah. Uh, you right. Maybe yeah. They, where, yeah. There's not much privacy on this shuttle. They're up there a long time, man. Like on the space station and stuff. Where are they gonna? Uh, I mean, I know they're meant to be doing missions and stuff, but okay, maybe not full sex, but somebody's j jacked off in space for sure. <laughs> oh god, yeah. But I'm just saying, I, I don't know if they've had sex. Because they've got cameras all over that fucking thing, and I'm sure they're on all the time. They probably don't give a shit, though, really. Like, you're up there. What are they going to do? Fucking come and retrieve you? I doubt it. Like, it costs a fortune. Yeah, you're but just up that's there. your career you as an up there and You're over. just jacking off nonstop in front of the cameras. They can't do <laughs> just, shit about it. Just spinning like they do when they're showing off the weightlessness, staring right at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you go on a, go on a spacewalk, me. totally nude with only the helmet on, <laughs> just like, just spinning around. I'm Oh, jerking yeah. it in space. What are you going to do about it? Come <laughs> and get you. me? <laughs> I'm living my best life up here. This is why I dedicated my life to be an astronaut. Mission accomplished, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> You're finished. I don't give a shit. Oh, God. That would explain why all the billionaires are getting in on it. So just, it must, maybe it's sex in space is somehow better. You know? It'd be the same as like hiring out James Cameron's submarine and going down on a Titanic uh, going voyage down of discovery on the Titanic, eh? and just fucking jacking <laughs> off the whole time when you're down there. Because who's going to do anything about it? Who's going to do anything about it? You're just like, you know, what are they going to do? Like, <laughs> what are you call do? you back up to the surface? Hell no. James Cameron is you're driving it. there. James Cameron can't do shit <laughs> about like, it. You're jacking off. Please stop that. Please stop jacking it <laughs> in the submarine. What are you going to do about it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Take us up? I, I don't think so, James. <laughs> I'm going to carry on. <laughs> <laughs> you try and stop me. It's like a fucking hostage situation with <laughs> jacking off. <laughs> Sick. Oh man, there's got to be some other situations where there's just like you're you're locked in, right? There's no, you know, you could really you could really develop a, like a a jack off hostage situation. Like the deep sea adventure for sure. Space, like I mean, for sure. What else? Where else are you where you you're like so impossible to, to to get at by people who would want to stop you from doing that you know what i mean yeah like, i see yeah. like maybe a big yeah. snow avalanche but like you and your party are, are safe in a cave or something oh, right like storm dudley's been going maybe <laughs> yeah i don't know i'm just like trying to like try this, and, this, yeah this just trying to think of scenarios where you could pull this off <laughs> the ultimate prank yeah i don't know oh my god you're trapped at like an adele concert <laughs> you're um, just jacking off the whole time <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's nothing else to do here. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> oh, 
Oh, God. fuck me, man. Well, Jesus. Yeah. In a World Cup penalty shootout, right. you're, you're on the pitch. You're on the pitch. It's, it's the it's the decisive penalty. It has to happen. They're not they're not going to cancel the game. Oh, this you would get happen. escorted off the pitch immediately if you start. No, but jacking all off eyes the... are on the penalty takers. <laughs> you right? run up to the center circle and just start bashing one very, out. Very very tense moment no one here. Would know. Wait, are they going to stop? Second. If we pan the, the camera to the left, there's. <laughs> Seems to be a man jacking off on the pitch. Um, <laughs> no, you'd get, you'd get, you'd get out. You'd be out of there immediately, right? Like they, they would, they would, they would bum rush the pitch. But you just have you a, a string there. of people when they're while they're escorting one lad off, another guy runs on. He starts doing it. We get the whole crowd in on it. Forty thousand people, one at a time. Eventually, they're just going to say, "Fuck it, just go ahead and take the penalty." Someone's going to be lucky enough to be having a wank on the pitch. Wow, oh, the final you know penalty what, I, of the World Cup is being taken. You know what a really good one would have been? Remember Go when on. David Blaine uh, was in that glass box <laughs> glass suspended box. above like Trafalgar Square? <laughs> oh my God. Man, who was getting you out of there in time? You could jack off like 20 times before somebody figured out how to get up to the glass box and eject you from it, right? <laughs> like, true. You could get away with some major Especially jacking off Especially because the there. police had probably been like advised in advance that they can't remove you because it's, it's a trick or whatever. Yeah, right? yeah, you know? yeah. But they'd have have to get the they'd have to get like a ladder or some shit like oh man there'd be oh, no it's like be it'd be a, impossible for them to stop you yeah, yeah they're not gonna get there in they time would, no. they would be chucking up like trying to drape like a, a oh a, yeah that's a like that's a one thing they could do actually they could drape, they could no, drape a blanket you've got a special over. so you've you've created this this it's a instead of a box which has corners we'll do a sphere and it's made yeah, of right. extra slippery materials so if they try and throw something we're just going to slide off no or you have like uh you you like under the guise of you need ventilation in the glass box you have like a fan installed at the just top just blowing stuff off and then you could just blast some air to like <laughs> blow the tarp off <laughs> so you could like start jacking off blow the tarp off and then it'd be like yeah what's up mr saturday night's here like <laughs> <laughs> I'd love it if, like, David Blaine, he was going into his box and all he had brought in with him was, like, a tub of uh, Vaseline <laughs> and a box of tissues. He's just and lubing like, up. Is that is that all you need for a week in there? He's like, yeah. <laughs> well, he's not meant, me. he wasn't allowed to eat or was it... He was allowed to drink a little bit, but he didn't eat for, like... I don't know, was it like two months or something like no, that? No, surely not two. Or the a body full is month. self-sustaining. Also, I'm sure it was a trick. I yeah, still don't I think believe it, he actually I think did. it was, but anyway, that I think that would is a definite contender for a good place to 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 do a jack off prank to When people. he do he do he just do that thing he always does, watch. And then just take his cock out. Watch. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. Oh fuck me. What the hell happened to David Blaine? Like, where the fuck is he's he now? He's still going, apparently. He's still he going? Is. He what did about Darren tourist. Brown, the mindbender guy? Is he still going to? He's too? doing stuff. Yeah, oh. but Darren, Darren Brown still gets. So in 2020, he did Ascension. He performed the David Blaine Ascension stunt, which involved him floating while holding onto a cluster of 52 helium-filled balloons using a harness. Man, I used to love that shit, like the, the, the street magician stuff. Remember when he used to do that, the, the trick where it looked like he was levitating off the ground yeah, yeah. and people would lose their shit and stuff? I loved all that. I thought it was pretty good. But like so the big, he, he the, got to he got to twenty four thousand feet when he did the balloon stunt. Right. What do you think he did up there? Yeah, got, got into the Mile High Club. Hundred thousand feet. Yeah. That's, oh, that is crap. that is five miles up almost. So what if was the, the what was the, what was the stunt? He went up on helium balloons. <laughs> yeah, and then he let go of the balloons and parachuted back down. What just now, like up style? Like he just he just like, went up. Yeah, he just went up. To see we're how just high talking about go. the Mile High Club. This is yeah. one way he did it. Ascension Mile High yeah. Club is what he did. He got up there. Jerked one off and then and then plummeted to earth triumphant. Triumphant in his victory, yeah. It's the Mile Hand Club. They, so. <laughs> the Mile Hand Club. They mm. said that when he um when he did the levitating trick, that he would do a much simpler levitation uh for the people to see, which is called the Balducci levitation, which is a very simple trick. I, I can do it, you can do it, it's very easy. Is that the one it's where you good, just it's a good trick? You stand up you like just on raise the... yourself up on one foot. Yeah. On one foot, yeah. And if they're at the right angle, it looks like your foot. It looks it's, like, it's yeah, a nice yeah. little trick. But I know, I do fucking... that one on my kids all the time and they right. think that I'm like some sort of Yeah, they think it's amazing. It's awesome. like, yeah. it's like the finger trick, it's very easy. But then, like, they always have them there. You never see him in shot doing this floating. It always cuts to with, with like, some, some actors 
providing yeah. the the left and right sort of scenery of him like five foot off the fucking ground, which is just him with a wire. Like that that was one of the weirder tricks. The one that the, my favorite is the one where he slaps um, some glass and the playing card is on the other side of it. But what's clearly happened is the people in the restaurant have quickly stuck that card on the other side of the glass and then gone back and made it look like they're not part of the trick. Like oh, there, right. There's all kinds of really... Like the one with the fly where he brings it back to life. If you put a fly in the fridge, it goes into a little coma. The heat of your hand will warm it back up. I've seen all these tricks debunked behind the magic. Oh, man. You 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 searched... You 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 chose to broke the magic? I did. Because he's a... He's a you know, I, I don't like it. No. Uh, if, if, if it's meant to be it's like, oh, I can't tell you. You know, it's like it's it's very clever to know how it's done. I like to know how it's done. I'm sorry. Some some tricks are so good that the, you can't figure it out, but most of them you can figure it out. You know, once you get down this rabbit hole, it's very interesting. It's fascinating. Oh man. The thing is that the best trick is something that's obvious once you know it, but impossible to guess yeah. otherwise. And also a lot um, of them just involve unbelievable sleight of hand skill. And or honestly, dexterity. Yeah. But once oh, you man. know that that's what's involved, you can honestly appreciate the trick in a new way because you're like, wow, that switch was so lick like when you see the moment they make a switch of some kind yeah, knowing yeah. when it's coming and seeing it it's it's like watching people top deal um you know or, or second deal from a deck of cards where they're holding the deck of cards you're looking at it it looks like they're dealing the, co the top card but they're doing the second card when you know what they're doing and you're watching it, it's even more impressive because you think that is unbelievable like the the skill involved man is, is incredible on the topic of rabbit holes quickly before we're uh, we're done I uh, I watched the uh, I watched a bit of the Super Bowl, but I missed the halftime show. Then right. watched it on YouTube um, like the day after because it was uh, it was it was sort of it was like, our, uh, it was our era, really. I mean, yeah, yeah, it was, like, it was yeah. touted to be a pretty good one, and like the lineup and everything, and I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, so I went back and watched a bunch of uh, old, you know, like top 10 best halftime shows or whatever. It's like the Prince one, yeah. like Michael Jackson in 93. Right. And the stuff. Gaga one was great. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't actually watch that one, but I heard that it, it was pretty good. And then uh, and then I started watching the top 10 biggest blunders of halftime shows uh, <laughs> and, uh, and okay. stuff. So like Where's I just, uh, yeah, I just went, I watched uh, just a ton of Super Bowl halftime shows and some of them were really great and some of them were, holy crap. Uh, Oh yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, there's so many people watching. It's it must be nerve wracking. Yeah, right yeah, now, but yeah, yeah. I love the phase that they went through where they would get Disney to do the halftime show, and they were all these like big, elaborate sort of um, sing songs with children and stuff. But they all seemed really bad. Yeah, uh, and then I mean, the Simpsons did that rip off of it, where he they were watching the Super Bowl halftime show, which never used to be like a, a a big stage for like big artists like it is no. now now it's like yeah. wow they're doing the super bowl like that's like you know you you pick a really famous person and it's like they this a huge show it's like a massive show yeah yeah really propels them sort of in terms of the fans like they did the halftime show like that is a big deal and um, in the past it was just shit I, when did they figure out that this is a great occasion to do an amazing show? I don't show? know, but this this year's one was great with Dre and um, and Eminem and and Snoop and everything. It was oh, it was really good, really really well done. I loved the uh, like like lots of great um, tracks, but also like just the the set and the the dancing and everything. It was just uh, just such a great show. Like they're just it was a really it was, clever set. It's really, really good. Yeah, yeah, really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so Adele, if you're listening, maybe um, you know take some oh. <laughs> take some pointers. <laughs> <laughs> from, Step it up a notch now, okay? Sure. <laughs> Come on, falling asleep over here. Holy crap! All right, thank you everyone. That was our podcast. Uh, we'll be back next week with some more. Until yeah. then, Lewis will be back next week. Yeah, good. he's coming back alone. <laughs> yeah, be good to yourselves. Bye. Peace. Bye. 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 Bye.